Hello friends, in today's video we're we'll looking at designing an expandable floating button and as you can see if you tap on this button you have more options if you tap on it again you can see that it collapsed if you like to see how this is done continue to watch this video and endeavor to watch to the end if this is your first time here on this channel we are committed to show you how to design good looking mobile applications and we also discuss strategies to become a good mobile app developer. If that interests you, I would like you to click on that subscribe button now and also turn on your notifications so that anytime we upload new content, you'll be notified. All right, without wasting time, let's get started. So I have Visual Studio 2019 open here. And what I have done is to install a plugin called the Pancake View. And I've also updated the Xamarin forms to the latest version and the last thing I've done is to bring in the asset that we need which is in our drawable folder if you are using the iOS project then you have to put your assets in the resources folder all right so before we continue the first thing I want us to do is to set the experimental flag because we're making use of the expander control and this is still an experimental so right before you set the main page once you have this line of code, device or set flag, and passing the experimental uh, value for the expander. All right. So before designing the page, we want to set some things in code behind. We want to set the binding context of this page and set it to itself because we want the values to come from here. You're not really going to be making use of any value, but we want to show the empty state of the carousel view so with that we need something to bind to the carousel view so i'm going to create a class here called album and with this i'm going to have a property called my images and i'll be binding this property to the view this is observable collection so this is just for illustration purpose all right so Let's start to design our, our control. Alright, so I'm going to remove this stack layout as I'm not going to be using it. So we're going to start with a grid. And inside this grid, we want to have a carousel view. In this carousel view, we are binding the, the item source to my images. And that is what is in our code behind and uh, setting the padding so as you can see on this page we have web forms is marine forms if i save this now you see that we have no items found no item found tap the plus sign to hide an item all right so this is what we want to do so let's design our floating button because that's what's going to contain the plus sign all right so to do this um i'm going to make use of a pancake view and this pancake view is going to i'm going to set it to the horizontal and the vertical option to end all right so the strategy here is this we're using a grid and we are putting these two uh controls together so we are making use of the carousel view and right on top of it we're going to use the pancake view Now, if you look if you look at it, we are setting the horizontal option to N and vertical option to N. We are setting the margin of 30 so that we can have we can have a, a margin around it. Um, okay, so let me just stop this namespace and save. Okay, so our pancake view is not showing yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the background for the pancake view. So I'm going to make use of a gradient. So we have pancake view dot gradient background gradient, gradient stops and i'm passing in this collection of gradient stop from light blue to slate blue so let's save this now okay so as you can see we are having our floating button uh showing up gradually so and also in this pancake view we have a party of, of 15. so right in this pancake view the first thing we're going to make use of is the expander because we want it we want the expander to we want this pancake view to expand 
as the expander uh, expands and we want it to also collapse the size will also re uh, reduce when the expander collapsed so we're going to make use of the expander right inside here let's say expander and um, we're going to set the horizontal option and the vertical option the horizontal option to start and the vertical option to end and right in this expander we want to set the header of the expander and the header is what is first what is first shown before it's expanded while the content is what is shown when the expander is is expanded so let's set the header here so our header is going to contain an image and that image is going to it's going to the item, the source of the image is going to be set to the hard um, image. Let's set this like this. So if we save this now, you can see that we have this button. And when we, when we tap on it, nothing is showing. All right. So let's um, work on that. So in order to show more content in our expand in our floating button. We want to add those contents as the content of the expander. So there's no need to say expander or content. Anything you put in within the expander tag here will be set as a content. So we're going to make use of a stack layout. And this stack layout, we're going to have image buttons. So we have three image buttons. And um, we set the source to these images. We have uh, which request an ice request so i'm going to remove this first so that you can see why we need them all right so if i save this now when i click on this you can see that it expands but well, the way it's expanding is expanding uh, downwards just like how a normal expander will work but this is not how we want it to be. As you can see, we have our plus sign here, and all the other uh, buttons are expanding downwards. But we want this plus sign to remain at its current position, and we want other content to to expand towards the top side. So, to do that, what we are going to do is to to want to rotate the expander. At 180 degrees so we'll come right here where we have the expander here let's set the rotation to 180 so when we save this and you click on it you can see now that our expander is actually expanding towards the top all right so by looking at it you can see that all our images are also rotated and uh, uh, this is not looking nice so we have to rotate all our images at angle 180 so that they can retain their normal position when the expander expands so let's save this as what we have all right so as you can see we have our images showing normally all right so the last thing we want to do before we go is anytime we expand this we want this plus uh, icon to change to the close icon. All right, so we are going to be making use of a trigger on the Im image. So we're going to be making use of um, a data trigger for our image. So right here, I'm going to say image I mean dot trigger triggers. So Right inside image of triggers, we're going to add uh, a data a data trigger, and we're going to set the ta the uh, target type to image. So let's say data trigger, and set the target type to image. And uh, next thing we want to do is to uh, set the 
by name of this of this uh, image. So once you set the trigger, so we're going to let me let me bring this so that we can see. So we're going to say binding equals source. So our source is set, set to relative source, and the ancestor ancestor of this uh, image control is the expander, and the part that I want to bind to is the is expanded, and the value that we are expecting, the value that we are expecting to set is when it is true. So I'm going to do this. So when it's expanded is true, that is when we want this data trigger to trigger. And the next thing we want to do is we want to set a property uh, in the trigger. And um, the property we're going to set is the source property by setting it to another image. Then let's close this data trigger. So what we what we have just done is that we are setting the binding of this trigger to the ancestor of this uh, image control, which is the expander, is of type expander, and the path of that expander that I want to make use of is the is expanded, and the value that I want to tr make, make trigger it you know, to trigger this is the true if it is false it's going to go back to normal if it is true it's going to set this property that is the source property to close uh image all right so let's save this now if you save this and you click on it you can see now that the source of the image has changed to the close and when we click on it again you can see that we have the uh plus icon so that is it that is how you create an expandable floating icon if you have enjoyed this video i want you to give it a thumbs up by liking it and also don't forget to share it with friends on facebook instagram twitter and if there's any uh topic that you want me to talk about also drop that in the comment section be below i'll be there to respond and i'll be there to take note of your comments Alright, thank you very much guys and I will see you in the next video.